Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to be doing a demo and a review of a new foundation that Clinique has just released. This is called the Super Balanced Silk Makeup Foundation. And I haven't done a foundation review in a while, in what, six months maybe? I don't know, I can't even remember the last foundation that I reviewed, but I love to buy and try foundations. It's kind of like another junky part of me is that you're always looking for the perfect base. Like, makeup is fun, colors are fun, but if your base sucks, then nothing else is gonna look good. So, this is the foundation that Clinique sent to me, I want to disclose that, but whether they sent it to me or not, it really doesn't impact my opinion whatsoever, because even if I had purchased it myself, if I didn't like it, it would go back, and if I loved it, I'd be sharing it anyways. So, thank you to Clinique, and as always with you guys, I want to have full disclosure. I trust your opinion, I rely on you guys to support me, and the, the, the least thing I can do is to be completely transparent with you guys. Welcome to all of my new subscribers. If you are new and just stopping by, please subscribe and join us here. I like to do lots of reviews and all kinds of fun chit chat videos. And if you enjoy this video, please thumbs it up and I will continue to search for the next best foundation to review for you guys. I just love doing foundation reviews because like I said, I'm kind of a junkie when it comes to getting my foundation perfect. I'm gonna have a demo for you guys. I'm going to insert that after I give you my um, little introduction about the foundation. I'm also going to be doing check-ins. So I'm gonna put the foundation on, check in four hours later and eight hours later so that you can see a full day of wearing this foundation. I have already been wearing it for a week so I know how it wears, but I want you guys to follow along with me and so you can see truly how it wears in the course of a full day. So the idea behind this super balanced foundation is that this foundation is supposed to be made for anybody and everybody. They claim that it is going to give you the balance of hydration as well as the oil control. I have very normal skin and so I'm not too oily and I'm not too dry so I feel like I'm a pretty good candidate to test this out because I'm kind of like the middle of the road as far as my skin type is concerned. So I'm going to start off by applying a primer before I put on the foundation. I always use a primer. I've actually tested the wear time on this foundation with a couple different primers and I just really enjoy the Cover FX anti-aging primer because I find that it really smooths out the texture of my skin, fills any sort of pores or pits you may have or scarring or anything like that. I would just recommend using the kind of primer you like to use that works best for your skin type. So I'm going to use the Cover FX anti-aging primer. I really just like how it it, I don't know, it feels really smooth on my skin. So it fills stuff in, but at the same time, it's creating a nice barrier between my skin and the foundation. If you are oily, if your skin type is super oily or super dry, use a primer that is gonna work well for your skin type, basically, is what I want to say. Now this foundation is super balanced. So it's claiming to balance out the oil, but at the same time be hydrated and moisturizing. So, I mean, that's a huge range of claims here. I have very normal skin, okay? Um, I'm not dry, I'm not super oily, I'm just pretty much normal. Some foundations can make me a little bit more oily in the T-zone than others, and I really just think that that's a conjunction of the type of moisturizer you're using with the primer and the foundation. Like, sometimes you just gotta figure out the right combination of products for your skin. So. Use the primer that you know is gonna work for your skin type. I am in the shade number 08 Silk Canvas. They categorize their foundations in uh, fair, moderately fair to, to neutral, it, which is what this category is, and then I think they have a light category and a dark category. So this is in the moderately fair to neutral undertones. That is definitely my skin color. So we're working with no pump. Um, I don't love that about this foundation, but it brings me back because a foundation I used to wear in high school, I wore Mary Kay. Um, it actually came in a frosted bottle like this. Uh, this is glass, and it's actually a really pretty looking bottle. Um, and it did not have a pump either. So not super sanitary, but you know you can go out and buy a pump for your foundations if that bothers you. It doesn't bother me because I don't put my makeup on anybody else but myself. So I am just going to dot the foundation on my face. I mean, if this were a pump, like if there were a pump on here, I'd probably put a good solid pump and a half maybe on my face. This foundation, at best, at best, I have been wearing this for several days in a row now, um, at best is going to give you medium coverage. I've tried to build it up, but really it's meant for a more sheer to medium coverage foundation. I can still see my freckles 
through my foundation once this is all blended out. And I would just recommend a spot concealing in those areas where you have blemishes you don't want to look at. I mean, after all, the point of foundation is to even out your skin. It's not to cover every single imperfection on your face, unless you're working with a full coverage situation, but that's why they make concealers, you know, so you can spot conceal without having to pile on the foundation all over your face where you don't even need it, you know? That's how your foundation starts to look really cakey, because you're trying to conceal something over here, but in order to do that, you have to apply foundation everywhere, and I, trust me, I used to make this mistake. I'm sharing from experience because I used to do that same thing, and then I realized, you know, maybe that's what concealer is for. As you can see, this blends out so well, just really quite effortlessly, and I prefer to use it with the, uh, a brush. Any sort of brush will do. This is the Sigma, it's kind of worn off here, F80. Um, I don't, I'm kind of not liking a beauty blender with this light of a foundation because I feel like it really just soaks up all of the product and you're going to get an even more of a sheer application with that dampened beauty blender versus a brush. I've also applied this using my fingers and so when I blend it in with my fingers versus a brush it's pretty much the same finish, you know, the same level of coverage. I'm going to zoom in here so you can kind of see what we're working with for coverage. You can definitely still see my freckling I have going on here. I'm not concerned about my under eyes because I'm going to go in with the rest of my concealer. I am not going to put powder all over my face because I want to get a true wear on the foundation with just the primer and the foundation in case you don't powder. Um, some days I don't powder my whole face just because it depends on the finish of the foundation. This is a natural to matte finish so I don't get really oily so I don't find a need to powder my whole face. Um, and you can really get a feel for the finish of the foundation if I skip the whole powder thing. Um, but here's what we're working with on what you saw me blend in. Very natural looking indeed. I mean, you can still see some blemishes, but it's pretty, you know, very skin-like. 146, 147. Um, I finished putting my foundation on probably about 130, and I'm playing with the Kat Von D Metal Matte Palette. I'm going to have a look for this. Uh, our look coming up on Friday? Friday. I'll have a look for this for this coming week here. So I'll be right back. So here is a close-up of the foundation after the makeup application. You can see how it looks with the full face on. I will be back in four hours to show you how it is wearing. You are getting one fluid ounce and this costs $25. Wow, that is a great price point. I feel like higher-end foundations, they start at, you know, upwards of $30, $40, $50, 60 $70 for a high-end foundation. This is $25. I think this is absolutely affordable if you are looking for something that is not at the drugstore. So it comes in a frosted glass package like this. It does not have a pump. That can be annoying if you are someone who plans on using this on several different people, if you want it to be more sanitary. It doesn't bother me. It's kind of like a throwback to the, the old days of um, my first foundation I used to wear from Mary Kay. It never had a pump. I never heard of a pump on a foundation at that point. Um, and so you can buy a pump, you know, if, if, that's, if that's an issue for you. It's not really an issue for me because I just use this on myself. There are 20 shades available in this foundation. I am in the shade... Eight, which is silk canvas kind of like the moderately fair to neutral shade range within that color category they have fair shades moderately fair shades light shades and upwards into deep fair shades no not deep fair shades deep shades I feel like the texture of this foundation is very silky very lightweight it kind of reminds me in a way of the makeup forever HD foundation and it's not as liquidy as that foundation, but I feel like it has that same idea where it gives medium coverage, but it's very, um, very lightweight, not heavy. You cannot feel it on your face at all. It's not uh, a cakey feeling foundation. It really feels and mimics skin in the fact that it just, it just glides on and blends in really easily. You will see in the demo that it really doesn't take much to blend this foundation in, which I think is great. I've applied it with both my fingers and a brush, and I really was able to achieve, you know, a flawless finish with either method. The coverage on this foundation is anywhere from sheer to medium at best. You're not gonna get more than medium coverage with this. I've tried building it up, it's just not, it's just not made for that. So if you're looking for something full coverage, this is not gonna do it for you. However, I feel like if you spot conceal and then use this, you're still gonna get that full coverage appearance. Like I have on probably about 
if this had a pump in it, about one and a half, one and a half pumps maybe of foundation. I've done less and I've tried to do more, like I said, to get that full coverage, but it's really made for sheer to medium coverage. Um, just a very easy, easy makeup, everyday type of coverage. It has an SPF of 15 in it. However, I, I don't advise you to rely on your SPF in your makeup. Yes, that's great and awesome that it's in there, um, but you really need to have SPF, whether it's in your moisturizer or an actual sunscreen on your face, don't ever just rely on the makeup because it's never enough, especially once it starts breaking up. The finish on this foundation is very natural finish. Natural to matte is what they say. I think it depends on, number one, um, how much, like, do you have a good moisturizer on? Is your skin nicely plumped up and hydrated? Or if you're starting off with a very dry skin and then you put this on, it might appear more matte than it actually is because your underneath skin is going to soak up that foundation. So you really want to have a good, prep your base, prep your skin. It's very important no matter what foundation you put on to have very nicely hydrated and moisturized skin because your foundation is going to glide on so much better. Um, I also think it kind of matters what kind of primer you use because I purposely used a mattifying primer with this foundation and then today I used, um, you'll see in the demo, the Cover Effects Anti-Aging Primer and I've also used a luminous primer with this foundation and I feel like with the matte primer and my skin type, um, it looked way more matte than when I do a good moisturizer and like the Cover Effects Anti-Aging one just really plumps things up and smooths things out. I felt like it was more of like a natural matte finish. And then when I did it with a more luminous primer on top of my already very hydrated skin, I felt like the finish of the foundation was a lot more natural to luminous, kind of. Natural to satin finish. So the claims on this foundation are that it's super balanced. It is meant for all skin types. It is meant to give you the oil control for those that have oilier skin. And then it's meant to be a little bit hydrating, a little bit moisturizing for those that have more dry, normal to dry skin. We're going to go out throughout the day and do check-ins, but I can tell you from my experience with wearing this foundation over the past uh, few weeks that it definitely ha maintains its natural matte finish throughout the course of the day. Um, but when you put it on, it's not drying. It almost still, I mean, you could still, it looks like skin, okay? Like hydrated skin. And I think that the idea behind this foundation is genius that in the fact that it, you know, so many people can wear it. It's so versatile. It is 5.30 on the dot. About four hours later. Let's see what we're working with here. So I just got back from the grocery store. A side note. Um, the grocery stores here are expensive, number one. Number two, I went out in search for a 12-pack for my husband, and they, and then I thought, you know what, maybe I'll see if they have some new wines, because I went off my beaten track to a new, you know, a different place, and I found two awesome wines, which I'm so excited to drink, to consume. That, that came off wrong, but to share with you in my next What's in My Kitchen video. And anyways, um, you want to know how much a pound of bacon is at the grocery store down here in Mississippi? $10.99. Yeah, we're having bacon wrapped asparagus for dinner. And I was like, honey, that's the most expensive bacon I've seen. So anyways, the grocery store is expensive here. Okay, we are here to talk about foundation, not groceries, Chelsea. Um, Elsa's on the back. She's always on the bed. She's not on the back. She looks like she's on my back. I, I've lost it. I seriously have lost it. I haven't even had a sip of alcohol yet today. <laughs> um, so, okay. This review is getting a little crazy. So here is a zooming in situation. Goodness gracious, I'm scared, honestly, to upgrade to a new camera because if we go any more high def than this, I'm not sure I can handle it. But anyways, this is what the foundation looks like. It has been four hours. I feel like I was looking in the rear view mirror of my car as I was parked, um, and I was thinking, you know what, I cannot forget to tell them that this doesn't look makeup -y. Like, I just was out in the sunlight. I might be a little dewy because it's still hot out. I'm wearing this sweatshirt, but my inside is air-conditioned outside. It's still pretty warm. Um, but I feel like it doesn't look like makeup when I look in the rear view, rear view mirror. And for me, that is the true test of a foundation as to whether I really, really love it or I'm like, okay, I can wear that for certain occasions. Like, out at nighttime for dinner in the dark or in a movie theater, it doesn't matter if your face looks cakey because you can't tell. But in the sunlight, the sun doesn't lie. It shows everything. So, I feel like this looks very skin-like. It doesn't look heavy. Um... 
I'm not dewy, I'm not oily, I feel like it hasn't broken up, let me, let me look in the mirror here, um, it has not broken up at all, I did eat lunch, I didn't even touch up my lipstick actually, I just realized that, um, <laughs> I probably should have done that for this video, but whatever, we're rolling with it. I honestly, I don't touch my makeup up, through, makeup up throughout the course of the day. I only touch up my lips, like if I'm out and about and I eat or something, but everything else, no, we just roll with it. Um, which is why I want a foundation to perform, because I'm just not one to look in the mirror and like touch up my makeup. No, fit, play with my hair? Yeah, I'm guilty of that. Okay, so, yeah, I mean... Right here, there's a little bit missing, but that's because I do this a lot, and I was doing emails and stuff, but that's that's kind of my fault. But everywhere else, especially like in the areas where I would get greasy, which is like in here and my forehead, we have no creasing. Now, remember, I did not powder. We have no breaking up. So, I mean, so far, four hours into the day, you're looking at about lunchtime. That would probably be the time you would, you know, go to the bathroom, look in the mirror, after lunch, touch things up if you needed to, but I'm not feeling like that's even a necessity at this point. So, I wanted to tell you about the Skin Like a Finish, and I think I touched on everything else during, like, the claims of the foundation. I feel like this definitely is controlling my oil, but yet it still is very hydrating on the sides. Because that's the thing, like, if you're wearing an oil-controlling foundation, and you're putting it all over your face in the areas that you don't need the oil control, it can tend to look dry and cakey and just, you know what I mean? So, for some people that are super oily, they might have to cocktail their foundations so that their sides aren't all icky and crusty and gross. So, so far, I feel like this is a really versatile foundation, and it's super cool that it can control your oil, but yet, at the same time, still look like skin, and not, like cakey foundation because yeah so I will be back in four hours I will be wearing this for you guys because at 9 30 at night if you were to come to my house I would not be wearing makeup quite frankly if you were to come to my house at this time of night which is 5 30 I wouldn't be wearing makeup because I like to take it off and then eat dinner and get my jammies on and relax and all that kind of thing so I will be back at 9 30 to have the eight hour mark okay guys it is 8 33 I'm cutting this an hour short because I need to show you what is happening. So, and this has happened every other time that I've worn this foundation. I've worn it with several different primers, as I explained earlier. I felt like I could get eight hours of, out of this foundation, but it's basically a seven hour foundation. So, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm having a little bit of breaking up in here. And I feel like this is still absolutely wearable outside of the house. However, it's starting to like break up in here and look a little bit makeup-y because it's starting to pull apart from my skin. So you can see my skin and the makeup. And to me, that's like, okay, then that's the longevity of the foundation when it starts to break apart. So I'm not even overly oily. So I feel like if you are super oily, you're really gonna need to do like a mattifying primer set your face with powder, and probably use a setting spray. That seems high maintenance, but I'm not oily, so I can't attest to that. I'm just guessing or recommending to you if you're not quite sure if this is going to work for you, I would definitely incorporate those things. So basically, I feel like seven hours is max life of this foundation. So would I wear this to the office if I couldn't touch it up? <sighs> Maybe I'd mix it in with something just because I wouldn't want to take the chance of, you know, like, if you have an important meeting or something and you don't want to look like, like your face is breaking apart, you know what I mean? So, I feel like it still looks great out here. Like, it does not, it has not broken up at all out here. It's just in the center area where I produce my oil, probably typically where most people produce their oil. My forehead looks okay, but it's just like this part of my face. And I feel like when you talk to somebody, that's kind of like the area you're drawn to, their mouth, their eyes kind of thing. So, and of course, this is the area that moves around the most all day long when I'm talking constantly. So, I would say overall, let me zoom you back out here and give you my final thoughts on it. Oh, let me fluff my hair a little bit. So, I would say overall, this is definitely not a full day's foundation. Um, seven hours, seven and a half hours for someone like me who has normal skin. Oily, I feel like that's a whole different topic. Dry, this might just be fantastic for you. Um, I think it's beautiful. I think the concept behind it is awesome that it's made for, you know, controlling the oil, but yet still being hydrating, not being a super, super matte foundation, but not being something that people with oily skin can't wear. 
another side note, um, these Kat Von D eyeshadows have not moved at all. They look fantastic. Like I said, I'm going to have a look on Friday. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope you find it helpful. Let me know down below if you're currently rocking this foundation or if it was a no-go for you. Um, it's always interesting for you guys to read the comments too to see like, hey, that person has my skin type. Maybe I should try it or maybe I shouldn't. Or just give your opinions down below because it's always fun to interact together here as a family. And as always, thumbs up this video. Share it. Um, I, it helps my channel out so much. And I appreciate every single one of you. I've been getting some really positive feedback from you guys that you really are enjoying join my channel and I tell you what that just gives me an extra little push to keep putting out great content and you know as you know like I'm still a, a real person I'm still leading a real life here and we got lots of things going on and I'm sure you do too and so I try to put my best forward and it doesn't always come out as perfect as I'd like it to be but at the same time I want it to be real and relatable because I am so far from perfect it's not even funny so I hope you guys enjoyed this we will chat soon and I will see you on Friday Ooh, for a look. I'm going to do a look with this uh, metal matte palette I'm wearing on my eyes today and I freaking love it. Okay, so I will see you guys on Friday. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Elsa? Kitty, 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 what are you doing? What's my baby girl doing? Oh, she just loves to be up here with me. It's almost like, I feel, you know Where's Waldo, those books, I loved those as a child. I almost feel like we should do the Where's Elsa because in every single one of my videos, she is here, you just have to find her.